In the beginning, there was the Eternals. Then, there was us. Darren, could you please come back to reality, please? We're doing a movie review. What? I'm in character. I guess... Hello, everybody. This is hey. Rob hey. from R&B Reviews. I'm joined by guests, and Darren, you're, you're still wearing that costume? Uh, yeah? You got a problem with it? I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't know if you were changing or not. I'm not, I'm not changing, okay? okay. okay. Don't, I'm, I'm a character, and, and we're going to do the Eternals review, and I... I just like to be one of them for, for, for a day. Okay. For a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, for those of you that are tuning in, yep, this I'm joined by two guest reviewers today instead of one. I'm first off over here is Darren. Hello. Greetings. I'm eternally grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, Darren, you might recognize Darren. He's been on a lot of my uh, guest reviews uh, this year, like our WandaVision review, Suicide Squad, Tomorrow War. So welcome back. And Venom Let There Be Carnage. Venom you can't forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at the far end here is a guest reviewer who's been on my channel before, but it's been quite a long time. We have Jerry. Welcome hey guys, back. how you doing? Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy glad to here. have you. I think we're going to have an interesting discussion. I was just oh, talking yeah. to them because I think you're going to get three different perspectives on this movie. You've oh, got yeah. the cr movie critic's perspective, you have the comic book fan perspective and the regular movie goer perspective there. <laughs> so we'll see, you know, where we go from here. But basically, The Eternals is a, the latest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And what can you tell us about Eternals in general? Well, basically, I mean, this is Marvel's gods, mm -hmm. okay? Who knows what was going through the minds of Jack Kirby when he created these amazing characters. Mm -hmm. The Internals, they were basically created in 1976. Mm -hmm. This was after Stan Lee and him created the Fantastic Four and then the Inhumans. Mm -hmm. And then came the Eternals. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about the Eternals is this is Jack Kirby's baby, okay? Mm -hmm. That Stan really had no part in this. Mm -hmm. um, because in, in previous things like the Fantastic Four and the Inhumans, um, he basically was just the, the illustrator, mm. it, just, just doing, just doing the, the comic art. Mm. And he really had nothing to do with the story, but Jack Kirby had, had all this. And I mean, his legacy lives on in the Eternals, which is just so great. Mm. I'm so excited to talk about this movie <laughs> definitely um because we all know it hasn't really did that great on on uh, tomatoes on Ryan tomatoes and and uh, just for like a what is it like 67 percent i saw at I one time before the movie even came out yeah i mean i tried not to read it jerry yeah. you didn't read any or watch any reviews before going to the movie yeah. not too many i saw the uh the grade it got which i believe was like a 63 but besides so that 63? i didn't really know yeah, too much I, in, so. I didn't read any <clears throat> reviews and watch any unfortunately i was on uh, a search engine and i was also on facebook and i would see these headlines i'm like no i don't want to see that <laughs> yeah but um i know you like looking and watching reviews i ahead of time. i do because i like to see what people are are thinking you know and uh and us being a movie review channel, we're in competition with other movie reviewers. I like to like to get ahead of the the game, yeah. so to speak. But yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, first off, the movie was directed by Chloe Zhao. Uh, she directed No Man Land, which starred Frances McDormand, um, and it won a, a lot of Oscars. And the cast is made up of Richard Madden as Icarus, Gemma Chan as Cersei, um, Angelina Jolie as Thena, Selma Hayek is their leader, Ajax. Um, I'm gonna, sorry if I screw his up, Kumal Najjar is Kingo, <laughs> Leah McHugh is Sprite, Brian Tyree Henry is Festos, Lauren Ridoff is McCary, Barry Coogan is Druig, and again, I'm gonna screw this name up and I apologize, but Madong Seok is Gilgamesh, so those are your Eternals, and Kit Harrington is a character named, uh, I believe, Dean, who's kind of like the love interest to Cersei, mm -hmm. so these are the... Um, characters of of the of the Eternals. 
Okay. All right. So I guess I'll get this going and we'll go from here. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds okay. Great. Uh, basically, The Eternals, I thought, was a very ambitious and thought-provoking Marvel movie. And I liked that it was trying to do something. I had a mixed reaction to this movie. I like that they're trying to do something different because I think now they're getting somewhat predictable. Like, I had a conversation with a friend who liked Black Widow because there were no portals that the superheroes can pull out of and destroy the villain with. <laughs> so I think they're trying to try some fresh things in here. Um, like, for example, the movie uses... Um, natural looking photography just like Black Widow and it looked at like the scenes on their spaceship almost reminded me of like 70s science fiction movies like Logan Run and 1979 Star Trek the motion picture um, but what they're trying to do here is that they're tr it's like they're trying to emerge two different film styles. they're trying to m use the Marvel uh, style um, and they're also trying to do what they what Zhao did with No Man Land where basically No Man Land was basically a movie where Frances McDormand loses her husband and she lives in her van and she goes looking for jobs and it's a character study where basically you follow the character they don't you have to figure out what the character means and feels through the dialogue and their action they don't spoon feed it to you well in Marvel movies sometimes a character will be like oh I'm so mad or or whatever where it's a little mm -hmm. bit more spelled out so they're trying to merge these two styles, and I found doing it that way was very hit and miss. This is this movie runs at 157 minutes, and at times it felt slow to me. Um, like the fight scenes I thought were very slow, except for the climactic one. And I read one headline that said that this movie was empty. I don't 100% agree with that. The only thing is, the out of all the characters... I felt like Cersei was the only one I felt like I connected with, and I really didn't connect with the others very well. I think the only time the slow pacing really worked was like quiet scenes between the characters. Like there's a scenes in the middle where different Eternals are paired up and they're trying to decide if they're going to go on and do what they their mission or whether or not those scenes worked very well. The acting I thought was very hit and miss. I really like Gemma Chan as Cersei and Selma Hayek as their leader Ajax. But Richard Madden I thought as Icarus who's kind of like the Eternal that's in love with Cersei. I kind of found him to be very bland in one note and lacking emotion except for one speech he does in the third act. And when he did that I'm like why weren't you acting like that the, the rest of the movie? I thought Angelina Jolie was underused. I felt like if you're going to get a big name, you know, it'd be nice to give her more to do. I didn't like Leah McHugh as Sprite. I felt like I had, this is my first time seeing her, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe mm -hmm. I need to see her other work. Mm -hmm. But I felt like her character, like she's trying to, she just didn't convey like the snarkiness and everything. Every time she tries to bring bad news to the other Eternals or she's getting into a fight with the other Eternals, I didn't believe it. I felt like she was kind of, you know, like it was beyond her limitations of what she can do at this point personally. Well, I'm going to interject there about Sprite because Sprite is kind of like fashion after Tinkerbell. Yeah. Really. And I mean, we got we got Disney and Marvel working together hand in hand here. Mm -hmm. And I think they did a great job with her, the actress, because she cannot age. She's a kid. Yeah. So she's basically the novice of the group and she's just so depressed inside that she can't be like other Eternals. That, you know, she does feel disconnected and I thought she really did do a great job in portraying um, that, that character. I mean, she has all the sorrow and everything but she keeps it inside but she wants to make others happy. She's a storyteller of the group, mm -hmm. you know. She she makes things great just for the humans, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm I'm gonna get into the whole theory behind Eternals after when you yeah. finish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I yeah. it's, I don't have a problem with the character. I like the character. I just don't right. think the actress did a, as good of a job. <laughs> um, the actor playing Kingo, I really love the humor. That's one of the things I thought this movie got right oh was gosh. the was the humor. Like, there's Dean, yes. who's Cersei's human love interest, yeah. and then Kingo. Um, he, after the Eternals go their own way for a while, um, he becomes a Bollywood actor, and he has a valley that's terrific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Druig was another actor I found lacking emotion. I kind of him boring. There's a scene where him and Icarus are fighting about whether they should interfere and there was like no emotional in that scene. And I'm like, well, come on, get at each other, you know, you know, get into it. Again, again, Rob, these are young actors. You got to give kids just props for just portraying these characters. Well, because how, it's it's a big role. How old so, is Barry? Oh, I 
I, I, I have no idea, but, yep. but they did depict him as a teenager, where Sprite was much well, younger. I, you have the director like guiding them and lifting their performance, yeah. it helps. Uh, but I just will say this, you know, um, to speed things up, I really like the themes of this movie, but um, like human greed, whether humans are worth saving. Some characters are complex, but I felt like sometimes they scratched their surface. The dialogue was hit and this. Some of it was great, like the humor. Mm -hmm. Some of it felt expository. Um, the climactic battle, I thought, was probably the best one of the movie. Um, and we'll probably talk about this later, um, but there's a mid-credit and an end-credit scene that actually felt like a Marvel movie to me. But overall, I think this is a movie where it's going to be an underrated cult-following Marvel movie. You're going to have some people defending it, and there's some people that just aren't going to like it. This mm -hmm. is a movie that does kind of test you a little bit because it is a bit slower. It's not a glossy movie. Yeah. It's not... Yes, there's beautiful special effects that look great on the big screen, but it's much slower paced, and I felt like um, it's got some great potential, but I felt like some of the characters I just did not care about, except for maybe Cersei. So that's my take. So overall, it's, it's got its good points, but mixed review for me. Interesting. All right, well, I really thought The Eternals was actually wonderful. Okay, it's, it's a movie of of epic biblical and mythological proportions. Yes. I saw a lot of Greek mythology in there, and again, Jack Kirby, I mean, just what was going through his mind, you know, um, to, I mean, he had to be fascinated with the Bible, because this yeah. was just Bible, like in the beginning, I mean, with the story of, of Adam and Eve, and just all the creations of the humans, I mean, just, just, a beautiful thought process mm -hmm. behind this yeah. movie and you got to give props to the late and great Jack Kirby for that and and Stanley if if he helped with that um, but basically these are Marvel's gods and I thought that it was more Greek mythology based on Angelina's jo Jolie's character which is Athena you know, she's the goddess of war. She has the power to, to fashion any weapon with with her mind. I mean, it's it's just a beautiful uh, premise. And her being so disconnected, how you are saying, um, I thought really worked well because the character does have a problem and you really do feel for her mm -hmm. because she is really lost in translation of, compared to all the Eternals. And I love and I hate that they introduce this as Marvel's first family because this, the Fantastic Four is Marvel's first family. That's true. But, but we, we, they were 1976, the Fantastic Four was 1961. Yeah. But before the Fantastic Four were ever created, there were Eternals. But before <laughs> that, there were Celestials, which are just an ancient uh, cosmic beings. Um, which actually are portrayed as the true gods in in the Marvel Universe among all other cosmic beings like the Watcher which we see in What If um, which it's just so exciting to see just all these all these characters just come to life uh, from from all the years of collecting trading cards and comic books just seeing just the evolution of, of everything unfold on screen is just amazing the, the actors and just the cast are just Tremendous, mm. but the Eternals have been watching over all of us just like how we believe if you believe in God um, Watch over us, and I think this is what makes the film so controversial um, Because why it's scored so low I found out on like TikTok and, and all that is because there was the first gay character in the Marvel Universe Granted, if you have been following Disney Plus, um, Loki did come out as bisexual, so um, which which was which was wonderful. Basically, the premise of the movie: there's this big event happening with the Celestials, and I don't want to get too much into it because then we're going to get into Spoilerville, and I really don't want to do that. Okay. But but I mean they 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 basically Thanos has really screwed up. The, the whole universe and and Iron Man Robert Downey Jr. himself has has done it too because the snap has really altered a lot of uh, a lot of lives and the world as a whole and the Eternals are just like oh shit we 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 have to come and just put it all back together of course we got this in the preview 
So, um, uh, just by Selma Hayek's beautiful dialogue. <laughs> um, this movie did start off very slow it did. for me, yeah. okay? Um, there was a lot of jumping around, which I really did appreciate at some points, and then I'm just like, why couldn't they just do this in sequence? It was so so out of sequence. I liked that. I liked you how, did. I liked that, that it wasn't just you know going from the beginning. I think it kind of helped hold my interest. Okay. Personally. Okay. I guess for era, for eras because like they they tackled the Babylonians mm -hmm. and and just just all the all the stuff that we read about in the Bible. Um, I did identify with all the characters, and to me, Cersei. And Icarus's romance was kind of lackluster mm -hmm. for me a yeah. little bit because I didn't really quite believe that they're like in love. Like they are like the first Adam and Eve. Like yeah. I kind of like how how they're portrayed in it is what is what I got. I don't know. Like what what did you think? Yeah, I, I kind of got that. I kind of felt um, that it was a little lackluster, mainly because of Icarus. I think Cersei did a much better job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. She had um, much more, yeah. uh, not just like dialogue with that, but a lot. Yeah. you could tell she was expressing a lot more emotion. Right. And I don't know if it was just because of like Icarus's character. Right, right. But he, uh, yeah, a lot of times, like you said, he could be very like bland, like one dimensional uh -huh. kind of monotone. It was. And yeah. It I, was. But, but then you also got like the whole legend of Icarus like flew too far into the sun yeah. and and all that. I mean, they kind of like really just based his like whole origin of, of mythology, yeah. you know, and it's just it was just really kind of cool to see something different from what we know of Zeus and Athena and and but we got Athena, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I really thought it was hysterical at some parts because they're making fun of DC as well <laughs> because because like there's one point where like they're like what like like uh, what are you like Superman I saw you fly with, with laser beams and all that and then there was a reference to Batman so this is Marvel and DC like going <laughs> head to head and I and I love that I love that because they are they are competitors in the movie world although Marvel wins hands down story wise <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, DC is just too dark, um, and just just dramatic, and the storytelling is just not there. Um, yeah, especially for, in their for, cinematic for universe. Although Aquaman was 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 damn good. Yeah, Batman, um, the Batman Begins trilogy is better, I think. Yeah, yeah, like, that like was the, before they try to like make their own yeah. cinematic universe, the standalone films. Yeah, definitely. yeah, like this. Same thing with Joker. Yeah, yeah, like this new Batman that's coming out with Robert Pattinson. I don't, I don't. I'd like uh, to see it. I okay. Well, I'll I'll see it just to debate you. On it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jerry, um, let's. Uh, what, yeah. what, what what did you think of this movie? What are your thoughts? Yeah. So overall, I did think it was a pretty good movie. Um, I didn't know too much about the Eternals going into it. I didn't really have any like preconceived judgments about it. Mm -hmm. So um, when I did start it and uh, ended up going through it, like you guys said, I feel it did start somewhat slow. Mm -hmm. It did take a while to actually like really start building the story, yes. incorporating the characters and yes. everything. Uh, so probably about like 20 minutes in, like is when I finally started to get a little bit more engaged. Yeah, Dean, I thought he was very good. I know you guys mentioned, yeah, he was, you know, had some funny instances yeah. and everything. Yeah, Dean Dean Whitman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. overall, with him, yeah, I thought he was great. Yeah. Now, when it came to the Eternals themselves, Cersei, like, yeah, she mm -hmm. was fantastic. She kind of like led everything. Yeah. With Athena, now with Angelina Jolie, I think she did like a fantastic job with, um, you know, like the fighting sequences mm -hmm. and everything. But overall, I understand Rob's points where, with the screen time she did have, the Honestly, wasn't too much dialogue. There wasn't much um, character development with her. Mm -hmm. It kind of seemed like they mainly had her for the fighting sequence or yeah. box office appeal. Yeah. yeah, and being that she is the goddess of war, I could understand that to a degree. Like, uh, yeah, uh, to and, like and the her. mistress of evil in some other movie. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> yeah. So, um, overall, with her, like her fighting sequences were fantastic, and um, with uh, the little bit of character development she did have, it was pretty good. But it was she was in a strange predicament mm -hmm. because she ended up I don't want to get too into it but having that ailment and everything I believe that hindered her and that ended up 
like uh, preventing her from really like getting a lot of uh, character development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think because that was needed in the story, mm -hmm. I felt that yeah, it kind of like pulled back away from her actually having a lot more dialogue yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, she was fantastic, but you know, could have had a little bit more character development. Uh, but. When it comes to the, the main story, I thought it was pretty good. I am a psychology and philosophy major. I actually look a lot into religion, and I actually really appreciated the, all the different references. Yes. As yeah, Darren right. said, there was a lot of biblical references. I saw mm -hmm. stuff to Hinduism. I saw oh, stuff, yeah. Yeah, quite, yeah, quite a bit, like the Greek, Roman, and it was, yeah, it was pretty fantastic. And a lot of um, analogies leading back to the Celestials, how they yeah, pretty much were the true gods mm -hmm. of the Marvel Universe. That they, yeah, their energy, their entire being is what created uh, mm -hmm. pretty much all the planets, all the life. And it was uh, an interesting conundrum they ended up running into when they realized the true purpose of why they were there, what the Celestials were actually doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was uh, that. What that really did it for me. Once you actually like mm -hmm. found all that out. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just like kind of like a like a roller coaster. It starts off very yes. slow, and then and then and then you get to the hill, and then it's just like you yes. know, and then it just it carried so well through. I mean, I Definitely. I was very worried about that in the beginning, and it really proves that whether you believe in God or not, there is something bigger. In, in this universe than than all of us yes. and I think that's what really Jack Kirby wanted to to depict when he created the Eternals so so long ago but, but I mean just I I thought I thought just some of the dialogue like you mentioned was very lackluster in some parts it's just like this script wasn't well put together but the characters were mm -hmm. and it kind of like struggled uh, against each other. Now, now I just disagree with you both about Angelina Jolie. I mean, I'm going to defend her to my heart's content <laughs> because I really just love just her her absent-mindedness and I mean, just seeing a weak character become strong is such a beautiful thing and a woman if if that and one thing that the Marvel universe is depicting is they are giving power to to the women. Um of, of the Marvel Universe. I mean, we got that with Captain Marvel. We have that with Wanda now. Yeah. Um, the Scarlet Witch. It, it, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse. Some madness is coming. I mean, to face off against him. The Sorcerer Supreme. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. I I mean, oh, like I said, I think Angelina yeah. Jolie's character is interesting. I just, you know, like yeah. the ideas and the concepts about why it's, she is. It's okay. just the execution for me wasn't Okay, good. I'm going to quote the X-Men here. One of my favorite lines from X-Men Animated Series with Cyclops. People fear what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And they really do fear uh, Thena. In, in this in this movie and I think so do us because she is just so different from any character that we have s seen uh, grace the silver screen before oh, yeah. it's a very very beautiful thing and it also depicts everything that we've done wrong and now we are paying for dearly as as humans um, but the Eternals could have stepped in at any time to stop that and and they re it's a really a good-hearted movie. Yeah, that's yeah, something true. about yeah. the movie I liked. I just felt like again they, you know, they didn't could have explored it a bit more. But I mean, it's got some interesting ideas about climate change and and, and you know whether humans are worth saving mm -hmm. that was the and everything part, yeah. and family mm -hmm. and everything. But some of them, except for maybe family, only scratched the surface. I think family was the only theme that really explored because of you know what's been going on. Right. And there were two big points I wanted to bring up about Phantos. Um, one was he had a lot of great character development. Mm -hmm. He was funny. Honestly, um, yeah, besides Cersei, I would say he's like one of my top favorite Eternals. Yeah. Because, yeah, he had, his powers are very interesting. He kind of, yeah, led like the development of technology mm -hmm. for humankind. Yes. And not only did he have like a lot of like good comedic aspects, mm -hmm. he had a lot of emotional aspects as well. Yeah, great timing. Yeah. Great timing. Uh, yeah, when he actually, he realized he actually caused a lot of the destruction uh, mm -hmm. in the world. 
you right. can actually see him, you know, crying. And yeah, everything. you're right. I right. mean, that, that was a good performance. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, not just that. And like, what during the final fight sequence, like when he was actually fighting Icarus, yeah. like, because it was divided where five of the Eternals were more like the fighters, the warriors, mm -hmm. and the other five were more like specialty, they were mm -hmm. the intelligence. Mm -hmm. But with him, though, right at the end there, he really started, you know, like whoop yeah. some butt and everything with his amazing yeah. technology. Yeah. And then, um, so with him fantastic character but that leads me back to my second point where um with the lgbt mm -hmm. and um i was really um disappointed to hear that that was one of the bigger criticisms of the movie before anyone even like went to see you and me it. both are yeah. because well, you know after seeing it it's not much of a spoiler mm -hmm. it was over a three second kiss with his husband Besides that, like there was, there was like nothing. Oh, yes. and, it, and it's funny because you know there was plenty of like heterosexual kissing. Mm -hmm. There was even an implied sex scene. Mm -hmm. like, so yes. for yeah, for that like small three seconds to like completely belittle the yeah. entirety of the movie. Yeah. And and for Disney, I mean, yeah. you know, we're we're taking risk here. Although kids with the internet, they know a little bit more about things exactly. than what they what they should these days. You know, yeah. and I did not expect a gay couple so soon in, yeah. in in the in the MCU because the gay couple that I'm expecting is when Young Avengers happened because we were introduced to Wanda's sons yes in the Scarlet Witch's sons in uh, WandaVision when when uh, Billy grows up he yeah. becomes the Wiccan or the first first as guardian uh, but he he becomes he becomes the Wiccan and he's part of the Young Avengers, um, and he has a romance with, with a character called Hulkling in yeah. the comics. That was the gay couple that I was hoping that we would see. Of course, that's years away, so, and, you know, this is today, and I thought the Eternals carried that through. Now, getting with, getting with Gilgamesh, yeah. um, I love that he kind of was like the cook of the group. <laughs> and that, that scene, you, I, Again, biblical reference, The Last Supper. You know, just all, all of them at, at the table, and we saw that in the previews. Um, yeah. But Fastos, oh my gosh, if we had his technology, we would be, we would be just like all engineers and geniuses, <laughs> and the world would just not be suffering the way it, it, it would be. And, Definitely. And, and that's a wonderful reference in, in Eternals. Mm -hmm. I'm just, th th this movie is just... It's just evolutionary, in my opinion. Yeah. Real quick, leading back to Gilgamesh, with him, besides Angelina Jolie, I would say his fight sequences were up there with hers. His powers are very interesting, you know, he had like an incredible amount of strength, and he was like great with his, yeah, I wouldn't say martial arts, he was more like the boxer kind of guy. Yes. With his fight sequences and everything, yeah, they were, yeah, really profound, you know, he, yeah, they did a really good job with him. And yeah, it, it actually like made me excited. I kind of like would have wanted his powers, like mm -hmm. as you know, like they made him tough looking. Like so, and then you know, also he had a few like funny moments as well, especially yeah. with the uh, the baby bib and everything. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. So yeah, overall, yeah, I would say out of the Eternals, definitely yeah, Cersei, and then yeah, Gilgamesh, okay. and and then yeah. All right, so we kind of open the floodgates to, to, <laughs> to our spoilers, so I'm going to get into the end credits scene. Yeah. Okay, now just so you know, before we're about to go into spoilers, so if you don't want to, you know, see this, I'm going to put the time right there. If you want to skip to the end where we say goodbye, skip to right there, because otherwise for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about the middle and end credits scene. All right, proceed. Okay. All right, spoiler bell here. Okay, so at the end, at the end of Eternals, we get a wonderful credit scene after the main credits roll. Of uh, I know this this was rumored, and I'm so happy that it came true. Harry Styles uh, is it comes up, but first we see an interesting character, a short one at that, and his name is Pip, in 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 the. Uh, in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. And he's he's very good buddies with Adam Warlock, which we know that Will Poulter will be playing him in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So I have no doubt that we are going to see Pip 
probably, and and Harry Styles as Eros, uh, aka the Star Fox, which is Thanos' brother, which is just amazing. Now, now back in the comics, um, we see these characters as there was a comic called uh, Warlock and the Infinity Watch, mm. and Gamora was part of that as well. So that that is going to be so interesting to just see all these characters un unfold. Like, like what I love about Eternals, it's like you're taking years of literature and you're just molding it into this just wonderful mm. masterpiece, mm. and I I love that. Okay, so. Then, there is also, uh, I also think that we know the Fantastic Four is coming, Marvel's r really first family that, that we ever know and created by Jack Kirby and Stanley mm -hmm. himself. Um, then, there is a character, well, a Celestial, the one who made the Eternals, called Arshram, and and he basically is kind of like now judging the Eternals because they actually went against him, you know? So Arshram is judging the... he's a cosmic being, he's, he's judging um, uh, the human race and the Eternals and he's like, I'll be back. And... but I don't think he's going to return. I think he's going to send somebody else to come back and that is the cosmic being himself, Galactus, a fan favorite of the Fantastic Four. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to get with the Fantastic Four. We'll get Doctor Doom, of course, but we'll get the big bad himself, <laughs> Galactus, devourer of worlds. Um, and then we also might get the Silver Surfer too because, because when the Fantastic Four was made, you know, that's where the franchise ended was the rise of the Silver Surfer. And we also witnessed the fall of the Silver <laughs> Surfer, too. So, um, and with Loki uh, unleashing the multiverse of, uh, of, of madness here, so, so to speak, um, and time, continu kind, kind, time continuum, um, we don't really know what to expect. Exactly. Um, so... This is just exciting, guys. It is. It, and, it just really is. And then, of course, the end credits scene, like after the credits, we get another surprise. Dean opened up that box and we hear the voice. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. And then at the, and then at the very end credits, before we say goodbye, um, we get the evolution of the Black Knight himself, Dane Whitman. Uh, he... I mean, you you definitely know him as the Game of Thrones actor. That's the that's the franchise that made him. Um, so happy to have him in the MCU. But he opens this box, and you know, we kind of teased that before before even the end credit scenes roll with 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 uh, Cersei and his romantic interest. So he opens up the box and and he and but before he tells that Cersei is just like. He, he wants to tell Cersei the truth, like, he found something out about his family, and then, and then we see him opening the box and the crest of the Black Knight, which is just, it's going to unleash a whole big thing, probably with Warlock and the Infinity Watch, and I mean, the Black Knight is a big character in the MCU, and we're going to get him as well. <laughs> so, it, well, real quick though, don't forget about the voice at the end. Oh yes, and the voice, if you've been following What If, I thought it, okay, alright, so I've never seen this, I've, I've seen him in the comics, seen him in What If, but it is Huatu the Watcher, um, and he's the one that's watching over all of us, another god himself, so who knows how many gods there really are in the universe, um, definitely the MCU, uh, but but we hear a voice, and we believe that it's the Watcher. I thought it was Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson himself no. uh, at first, because that's who I'm used to seeing on, on the silver screen. Yeah, I wasn't sure who so, it was. I kept yeah. wondering, who could that be, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, and just the audience just went crazy. It's just like, I'm Samuel L. There was Samuel L. Jackson, and they're like, no, it's a Watcher. And I'm like, oh, you're <laughs> right, you're right, yes, the what if is, is linking. And, 
And we also got Peggy Carter um, going into the MCU as well, live action from What If. So it's just going to be um, um, amazing. One cool theory I did hear, it could be The Watcher, but I also heard it could possibly be Blade. Because mm -hmm. they are they are planning the Blade movie as mm -hmm. well. Sure. And yeah, they were also thinking it could be tied to Dracula. So yeah, or, be, yeah. Or, or the Midnight Suns. I had to yes. do my research to see if Black Knight was per the Midnight Sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but yeah. Um, but regardless though, whoever was that voice is yeah. going to be a big character, I, so it, I'm excited it, for it. It, it, just, it, just, it just really looked like it was The Watcher. It really, himself. yeah. It did sound like it. It, it was, yeah. and, and what, what a great voice. What's, what's that? Jeffrey name? Wright. Jeffrey Wright, amazing. I mean, he carried What If. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just for a cartoon, it just had so much heart. Definitely. And, and I mean, it was just, it was just amazing mm -hmm. to, to see that, and to see a breakout in to the MCU would be a, a real joy. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, well, let's go ahead and rate this movie then. Jerry, let's start with you. What would you rate it? Uh, I would say 4.5 out of 5. Okay, and Darren? Okay, I mean, I really loved it, but there was some some parts that really needed to to be well-fashioned more. Um, I will give it a 4.5 uh, star rating. Okay, so yeah. basically the same as Jerry. Uh, yeah, I, I would give it three and a half. It's ambitious, and I like that it's trying really? to be different, and I love some of the things that just, I felt like, like like we've been saying, I felt like it didn't all, it's it's trying to be intelligent, and it's trying to be smart, and I like that it's trying to do that, but I felt like it just didn't quite work very well for me. Hmm. I felt like it had some good ideas, though, okay, so. Okay. Yeah, but, and, and I think people are going to think that, because, again, it is biblical, and the Bible is not it for everybody. And, you know, and there are some people that just don't understand it and don't and don't believe in it. And they might just not believe in the Eternals. Yeah, and that's why I so. think this movie is going to be very, um, a movie where the fans are going to be debating it. I think people are going to say it's an underrated Marvel movie. Some people are going to say it's probably the one of the worst ones. I don't know. But personally, it's I didn't think it was bad. I like what they're trying to do, and they're trying to be different and break the mold a little bit. But it didn't quite work very well for me but it, it had some ideas mm -hmm. all right well guys what did you think of the eternals go ahead and post your comments in the comment box below feel free to check out some other movie reviews and uh, feel free to let us know what you thought of the movie you know hit the like button please if Definitely. you're interested please be a subscriber and guys thank you for participating in this interesting discussion oh, of great. course it was fantastic yeah <laughs> fantastic yes oh, fantastic <laughs> oh awesome yeah and and we're just so internally grateful for, for for you to listen